Hey, welcome to my hike. You want to come along, huh? Okay. All right, that's okay. I'm Kevin, and today we have got an amazing hike, as always. Today we're uh, carving out a path along the uh, foothills of the Hollywood Alps. And some great views here. You've got downtown LA over there. And over here, over those mountains right there, lays the land of Pasadena, Glendale, and a little further east is the land of New York City. So we are right in the hub of things. Oh, and behind me, you can see the Griffith Observatory up in Griffith Park. I'll tell you one thing, I would not want to live below the Griffith Observatory. Because you know how the creeps are around here. They're probably looking down at your house. You gotta keep the curtains drawn all the time. No, not for me, not for me. But you know what it is for me? This hike. Yeah, so slather on some suntan lotion, put on your little hat, and why don't we go take a hike? My hiking partner today, right off of this side of me, is a friend of mine, first of all, and she's a very talented performer. Um, singer, songwriter, pianist, jazz pianist. She's won tons of awards. Uh, Billboard has listed her as the top performer of the 2000th century. Yep, maybe you know some of her songs. I don't know why. Come away with me. There's many, many more. And her latest album, her Christmas album, which I love Christmas albums, is called I Dream of Christmas. Yep, and she's playing right over here at the Greek Theater, which is a stone's throw away. It is, as the crow flies, 20 seconds. It's just a hop, skip, and a jump. Anyway, I can't wait to hike with her. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're hiking with the talented Ms. Nora Jones. Well, here we are, Nora. We are heading up the beginning of the trail and it's in the blazing sun, <laughs> and you have a concert in, what, 20 minutes? <laughs> it's in many hours, but I chose high noon for our hike. Oh, perfect. Yeah. You've performed at the Greek before, right? I have, it's one of the more magical places to play. Yeah, it really is. It's been around for a while, too. It has, right? Yeah. Since when? Um, gotta be at least last year, I <laughs> think. <laughs> No, it's been around, I think, since the early 70s, late 60s, at oh. least, because I was talking to David Crosby, name dropping, from Crosby, Stills and Nash. Oh, heard of him, yeah. Yeah, and he said that the first time they played there, um, it was packed, and there was even people sitting up on the tr uh, trees behind the theater. Oh, that, they do that. They climb the trees, and you yeah. can see them up in the trees, and that's one of the cooler things. <laughs> Your audience is probably a very sophisticated, <laughs> red wine drinking, maybe Prosecchi, is that what it's called? Prosecchi? Prosecchi? What's that, wine? Prosecco? <laughs> Prosecchi. <laughs> oh no, I'm thinking of my Uber driver. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's what your audience is like. You know what? Sometimes it is, it depends on the venue. Sometimes it's very young. Yeah? Last time I played here at the Greek theater, it was a very young audience, so really? I, it just kind of, I don't know, it varies, which I like. But yeah, there's some Prosecchi drinkers, but uh... <laughs> This is crazy. Do I, should I carry you on my back? I wish you would. <sighs> when you were a kid, where did you, you grew up in New York? I was born in New York, and I lived there until I was about three. And then we moved down to Texas, to Dallas. Ew. So I mostly grew up in Texas. So you used to the heat. Huh? You're used to the heat. I hate it. I could never live in Texas in the summer. It, it's just Shade break. So... Shade break. Okay. Okay. How you doing? Okay. I'm good. She's going on in a couple hours. It's okay. This is good for my lungs. It's like warming up. You get your breath back? I'm good. Okay. Did your mother play the piano? No. She loved music though. And she put on great records all the time. Like Ray Charles. And... Oh, wow. Miles Davis. Yeah, Billie Holiday, a lot of Brazilian music. Yeah. You're such a good piano player as well as a singer. Oh, thank and you. And I'm not just blowing up your, uh, <laughs> blowing smoke up your uh, Prusheka. My hiking dress? Yeah. Dress. Not bad, right? I didn't know what else to wear. No, that's so perfect. I wore a nice dress. and cool. Yeah. Yeah. Jazz Radio. is. Um, would you say that's an acquired taste for most people? You know, it's a tricky conversation. I, I, I feel like it's not accessible to some people, but it just depends on what you're talking about. It's such a broad genre, yeah, really. Yeah, it is. I, I mean, mean, you could even say that 
Sting does some jazz, doesn't he? He played with a lot of jazz musicians. I guess I'll, oh, I would what? say that. Yeah. He has an affinity and appreciation for it. He played with some incredible jazz musicians. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know if I do jazz. I come from <laughs> jazz. That's where I learned how to play, you know, piano, and that's what I was imitating when I yeah. was learning how to sing songs. I took piano lessons a couple years ago. Really? Yeah. You know, I just wanted to play the piano and just be able to, you know, play some songs. Nothing, you know, too yeah. crazy. Like at a party? Yeah, I want to. You wanted to pull it out at a party and be the guy at the party? You know what I want to do? What? I want to do malls. <laughs> I want to sit down at that piano at the mall. And just blow everyone away? Start up, nobody's watching me. And then the YouTube thing cuts to like two minutes later, <laughs> there's 50 people around. <laughs> and I'm not ending a song, you know? Actually, More people. that would be pretty fun. Kevin Neal, just seeing Kevin Nealon at the mall just playing banging the piano. on the piano, banging like a kid. <laughs> I don't even think it would have to be good <laughs> to be interesting. <laughs> have you ever done that though? Go to a piano in a mall? No, I played a piano in a hotel once. Oh yeah? Because it was a very beautiful piano, but yeah, the guys were giving me like a, the side eye, the people that worked there, so I kind of stopped. Did you put a tip jar up there? No, <laughs> but I did that in high school and college. That was my job. Yeah. Yeah, I played at a restaurant every weekend and um, oh, I like had a Billy tip Joel. jar. Yeah, I guess so. What was the most you made in that tip jar? Did the tip <laughs> jar get kept getting bigger and bigger? It, you know, people, I well, it, the gig was solo piano, but they said I could bring a microphone and sing like a few songs here and there. Yeah. And so once I started throwing the singing in, the tips got more. Oh, nice. And that's when I kind of felt like, okay, my thing is the combo. I'm not just a piano player and I'm probably not gonna just sing. I'm sort of, when I combine them, it makes me unique. Yeah, you, know? you gotta, yeah, because a lot of people can play the piano. Yeah, but it was really good practice because yeah. learning how to play and sing at the same time, it's kind of coordination thing. Yeah. So it was like paid practice, but I probably got like 50 bucks in the tip jar. Wow. But uh, I got free food every night, so I was stoked about that. Yeah, you still get free food, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I try to pay for my food. I saw Chevy Chase playing the piano at the Beverly Hills Hotel in oh, the wow. lounge. Did you think he sounded good? Yeah, he was good. And he had a, he didn't have a very big tip jar out there because he had low expectations. It was a Dixie cup. <laughs> and the next time I saw him was a thimble. Oh my God. Um, how do you do it? How do you move your fingers around that keyboard so much? It's and, just like practice, you know? How do you yes. do stand-up comedy? You just gotta... Well, I don't like practice, a, that's for sure. Well, you do by doing it. I do, I know. Uh, little Broken Hearts. Mm. And Pick Me Up Off the Floor. Were oh, you yeah. going through some kind of a, <laughs> like, dark period then? I suppose so. <laughs> Man. <laughs> yeah, those are kind of dark albums. Yeah. But, but Pick Me Up Off the Floor came out during the beginning of the lockdown. And, oh, yeah. But we finished it before, so it was kind of funny. Yeah. Kind of matched that feeling yeah. to me. But, but don't, don't you think it's easier to write when you're in a dark mood, depressed? I mean, I think what it is about that is it helps you channel your dark energy into something that helps you through it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I guess, yes, but I think that's why. What would you say to the, to the, um, statement that creative people are sensitive definitely yeah <laughs> <laughs> most of them i would tell my friend sorry. she's sensitive sorry You're i would tell my running friend. me off the road here <laughs> yeah. you should see all the hikes i put up here <laughs> i've done this hike before have you yeah it's I very love convenient to the green yeah yeah i have a, a friend and if i ever call her sensitive she goes no no don't call me that I'm fragile. Ooh. Fragile. I don't There's know which one's difference. worse. Um, I think sensitive implies that you are overreacting to something, maybe. And fragile implies that you react quickly. Or you're breakable. Or you're breakable. <laughs> don't, ba don't break me. I've broken more people. Really? Yeah. Let's stop right here. In the shade. Yeah. First song that made you famous. Jesus came out of the gate and I got out of nowhere. Um, 20 years ago. And how was that, having that success all of a sudden, where, you know, your name is being mentioned everywhere? It was a trip. Isn't that amazing? It was weird. Driving in the car, you hear your song on the radio? <laughs> I mean, it was, it was sort of incredible and special and confusing. 
Yeah. It was it was all good and all confusing and all stress and all wacky. It's gotta be cool to have that. It seems like sudden success, but you've been working at it for a long time. Yeah, I mean, I feel really lucky that yeah. I still can play the Greek theater, you know? What a thrill That's that That's rad. Be. I mean, I'm happy. I'm not trying to be anywhere else than where I am right now, so. Yeah. I mean, to get out there in front of all those people as a fragile person, <laughs> I mean, that is really impressive. I'm not as fragile as you might think. No, I know, I'm kidding. No, but I'm not. I, I mean, I am, I have my moments, but I feel like I'm the one who kind of holds things together sometimes oh, in yeah. my group of artists. I, I could be wrong about that. I have my moments where I explode. Don't, don't get I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. you have an anger issue? Yeah, no, I like, issue? I don't have an anger issue anymore so much. Yeah. When I was younger, I was a little more hot under the collar. Everybody when they're younger is hot. I just stopped wearing collars. <laughs> what were you like in high school? Shy? I was shy and also kind of, I was just really into music. I mean, I was in marching band in ninth you grade. You were? Yeah, that Did was you play like, the piano? No, I played the saxophone. <laughs> So you're gonna take a shower before the show tonight? Yeah, that's my plan, but I don't know. Do you think I need to? I think maybe you should. I think it's kind of sweaty. What's the longest you've gone without showering? Um, <laughs> I like to do a quick PTA every day if I yeah. don't have access to a shower, you know? Yeah, and what about shaving your legs? Oh, it depends on the season. <laughs> do you have somebody that does that for you? Yeah, you, you oh yeah, people? totally. <laughs> <laughs> no, silly. Let's go up to the shade right here. Yeah, let's just go to the most isolated spot. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> are there any mountain lions here? There are. Yeah. And rattlesnakes you actually gotta oh, look out for. Hi. <laughs> I love this though because I, I've been trying to be really active and yeah. uh, stave off the bad feelings by exercising. And the demons? Yes, I much prefer to do it by taking walks than, you know, other stuff. Well, here's something a lot of people may or may not know that your father is Rajiv Shankar. Did I say that right? Ravi. Ravi. <laughs> no, I have, a, I have an Indian friend who's named Rajiv. Oh, okay. And he's spelled it the same way. Different guy. So how do you say it? Rahi? Ravi Shankar. Ravi. Ravi Shankar. Yes. I'm pretty sure it's Rajiv. Are no. you sure? <laughs> Let me call my, my half sister and ask him. Um, so he plays the sitar. Yeah, he did. Yeah. And Yeah, he did. And he was like maestro on it. I mean, he was, he was a genius. <laughs> yeah, he was above maestro. He was a brilliant and beautiful musician. Were you with him a lot growing up? I wasn't. Um, I saw him off and on. And then there was a long period where we were a little bit estranged. Uh, yeah. But when I was 18, I sort of reconnect with him. Yeah. And um, I decided that, and literally on Friday, and did I met you, him. Um, and I, I met my half-sister for the first time. You have two half-sisters? No, right? one. I had a half-brother, but he died oh, I'm sorry. a long time ago. But um, he, my half-sister is two years younger than me, mm -hmm. Anushka. She's an amazing sitar player as well, really? brilliant. Um, but we met when I was 18 and she was 16. So that was kind of crazy. That is crazy. And How'd you get along? We're, we got along great. I mean, we both really wanted this because we were both sort of raised only children. Yeah. And so that was incredible. And, and I got to reconnect with my dad and I had another uh, 20 or so years after that of having a relationship with him. So that was great. It was very healing for us both, I think. Nice guy. Yeah, sweet guy. Did he keep in touch with your mother over those years? I've been a little personal. Is this therapy with Kevin? Yeah. Tell me how you feel about that. <laughs> what are your feelings? My mom's going to yell at me. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, family history is always tricky to boil down in a quick, quick uh, rundown. Well, we got a three mile hike ahead of us, so we got plenty <laughs> of time. Plenty of time. Is it sitar or sitar? I don't know. Okay. Do you ever try to hold in a sneeze? 
Oh, I am a notoriously silent sneezer. You are? Yeah, and the only, and every time I sneeze, people are like, geez, let it out, why don't you? <laughs> but the only reason I sneeze quietly is because growing up, my mom had the most loud sneeze on the planet, and I was always like a dorky teenager embarrassed yeah. by her yeah. sneeze. So I've always been a sneeze swallower. And it's weird, but it's just what I do. Oh my gosh, so what happens when you're singing and you have to sneeze? That rarely happens. Do you ever I forget guess. the lyrics of a word? All the of time. A song? You do? Yeah. I usually make them up if I forget them. Oh, that's great. Um, Let me hear you scat. I'm not a great scatter. Okay. Zaba <laughs> dweet. Bula have a blue. Good Christmas without you. Oh, oh, oh. I'll be so blue. I just the thinking about you. Okay, now you do the uh, start from the beginning, and I'm going to do the, uh, the harmony. Okay, but you know the best part to harmonize is the second part. Oh, it is okay. Look at the... Okay. <laughs> Ready? Do you want me to start at the beginning? Yeah. Okay. I'll have a blue Christmas without you. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. I'll be, be so blue. Just thinking about you. You're good. Decorations of red on a green Christmas tree. Bob, Bob, Bob. Won't be the same here when you're not here with me. Have a blue. Thanks, Nora. Man, that was fun hike. Yeah. Well. How lucky am I to hike with Nora Jones? She's performing in about three hours and she'll probably still be sweaty from this hike. Yeah, that's the price it is. And maybe she will, maybe she won't take a shower. Anyway, I know it's gonna be a great concert. I can't wait to go and I hope you're going too. Thanks for joining, please subscribe, hit that notification button. We'll catch you next time, happy trails.